Welcome to St. Andrew's Brighton. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. There is no one who has left a home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for Jesus' sake who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Dear friends, if salvation were up to us, it would be impossible to achieve. Our challenge is to put our hope and trust in the gifts of God, not in power or wealth or in ourselves. It is not a matter of having nothing, but of putting first things first. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, in your Son you call not the righteous but the sinners to repentance. Draw us away from the easy road that leads to destruction and guide us into paths that lead to life abundant, that in seeking your truth and obeying your will, we may know the joy of being a disciple of Jesus, our Savior who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Yebohuidashu, 
，政治人可以引他辩论，这样我必永远脱离那审判我的。只是我往前行，他不在那里；往后退，也不能见他。他在左边行事，我却不能看见；在右边隐藏，我也不能见他。神使我丧胆，全能者使我惊惶。我的恐惧不是因为黑暗，也不是因为幽暗蒙蔽我的脸。聆听圣灵对教会的话，感谢上帝。Reading from the Epistles of the New Testament. Indeed, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before Him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the One. To whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great High Priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a High Priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without a sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find the grace to help in time of need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, "Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life?" Jesus said to him, "Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments: you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal." You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to them, "Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth." Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, "You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me." When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, "How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God!" And the disciples were perplexed at these words. 
But Jesus said to them, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One day, long times ago, in our very early stages of becoming Christians, my husband, Jeff, wanted to increase our church giving to the 10% of our income. I wasn't shocked or angry, but there was definitely some reluctance in my heart. Nevertheless, I agreed. It is always very hard to give away money, isn't it? God knows. And the Bible says, He loves a cheerful giver. So when the very well-known character in today's gospel, the rich man, ran up and knelt before Jesus with even sincerity, and respect. Jesus directly picked up on this man's most valued and most sensitive topic, money. What must I do to inherit the eternal life? The rich young man, his questions shows that he missed Jesus' proclamation that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it, which means trust God. There is no doubt that with too much money already and busy acquiring more, the young man does not understand that one can rarely do anything about inheritance. Inheritance is something a person can only be given. It is a free gift from the wealth and the generosity of someone else. Christians believe salvation comes from God's grace, not from our deeds that is, not from what we do. Salvation cannot lie in human hands. It resides only with God. Without God's support, we humans cannot achieve our deepest desires. Our Lord is a great counselor. He always deals with our problems at an intense personal level. He constantly explores our hearts and the unaddressed issues in the depths of our souls. So he led this young man to talk about money and said, you lack one thing, go sell what you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. What is Jesus doing here? Jesus wants to say that this man's problem is not money itself, 
but his attitude towards wealth. And wealth that has become an idol that controlled and haunted his life. Jesus confronts this young man with this issue because he knows that this young man is too rich and that his possessions prevents him from entering and living the full life of the kingdom. Some of my favorite Bible verses are from the book of Proverbs chapter 30, which says, Two things I ask of you, O Lord, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Wow, there's a lot of self-honesty. Can we match that? Does this proverb also echo with the Lord's Prayer? Give us today our daily bread. We know that Jesus loves this rich man. He does not see the man as intentionally evil. Jesus speaks his sharp words directly to him out of love because he wants him to be free. And Jesus knows that the only way of living free from the harmful grip of money is to give it away. It is a precisely a reflection of the Proverbs that try to teach this, that if a person is too rich, it could become a problem of forgetting God, denying God, and being blind to see that all wealth is from God. Just as Jesus warns us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. And seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all that you need will be given to you. Our God is a balanced God. He is just but merciful. He is powerful but kind. He is forever the sovereign God, but his love endures forever. Jesus loves both the poor and the rich, but he wants us to love our neighbors as ourselves. If our neighbor lacks, the best way to love is to share our richness. As God has blessed us, so we can bless others. So Christianity is a sharing belief and a discipline. When we share freely, voluntarily and generously, and we are so free and we are so happy. What Jesus wants the young man to understand is Unless you clearly see the dangers that wealth can bring to spiritual life, unless you fully understand these dangers, unless you honestly admit that your heart is full of desire of money, unless you completely turn this attitude around and become generous, actively help the poor, let go of your wealthy arrogance. I cannot work in your life. I like what the theologian Jack Alu once said. How can we overcome the spiritual power of money? Not by accumulating more money, 
not by using money for good purposes, not by being just and fair in our dealings. The law of money is the law of accumulation, of buying and selling. This is why the only way to overcome the spiritual power of money is to give our money away. Thus, desacralizing it and freeing ourselves from its control. To give away money is to win a victory over the spiritual power that oppresses us. Jesus is challenging to the wealthy is critically important today, particularly in our privileged Western sides church congregations. I know we people who live in Brighton are renowned for our wealth, and we are often accused of being mean. But I also know so many generous people here who care so much and give freely. We just have to ask ourselves, can we do more? We have to be as direct and challenging to ourselves as Jesus was to that rich young man. Dear brothers and sisters, living in the kingdom of God is about caring and sharing Life in the kingdom of God is about transformation and character building change. While preparing this sermon, God has enlightened my heart to show me that I have not done so much about sharing and giving. Under the COVID-19 challenging circumstances, there are so many areas where we can give and share our possessions to the homeless through charities to dixon house to anglicare to the newly arrived afghan refugees from kabul and to those children in third world countries who don't have christmas gifts this list is endless so the caring and the giving must be endless too let us pray righteous god because we are made in your image we are made to reflect your giving and the generous nature therefore we ask that you mold us to better reflect this image shape our hearts minds and souls that we might learn to give as freely as you give for you are a god who holds nothing back but lays down even your own life for us amen Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we entrust to you the small and the complex problems facing your church throughout the world. We think of all those in lay and ordained ministry and for each person worshiping somewhere today. We particularly pray for Ian, Michelle, Avery, and the people from St. Andrew's Brighton, St. David's Moreben, St. Peter's Easter Hill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to you the local issues where feelings run high, the national and international matters of concern and our longing for your kingdom to come on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to you our loved ones, those who are constantly on our minds, those who frighten us, and all who need us to listen to them better. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to you all who feel lost and disillusioned, those whose lives are plagued by resentment or guilt, or who suffer and need comforting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to you those who have died and those who will die today, all who mourn and all who minister to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust to you ourselves and the rest of our lives, all our decisions, hopes, sorrows, and joys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share, accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Dear brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God, we give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Merciful Lord, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship your Father in songs of endeavor and in praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, Let's confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, 
grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ, remembrance that he died for us, feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with the Holy Spirit. May we honor you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.